I know it kind of. Manny, are you there? That's actually happy. I'm here. Can you hear me? Man, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm Manny. I lost you. I lost you. Call, call back in a few minutes. Bill Simmons, as promised, is on the line with us right now. What's up, my brother? How are you? Happy 4th of July. I'm doing good. Yeah, you too, brother. All right, talk to me, man, because I know you got a lot of stuff to say in light of what happened with KD going to Brooklyn, not going to the Knicks. Kawhi's still out there. We don't know where he's going, even though we're here in L.A. Lakers. What's on your mind? Well, first of all, I was driving around L.A. today listening to your show in the beginning, and it became clear you're now in deep denial with the Knicks. <laughs> you did this whole thing. You know, right. it, maybe plan B, it's not that bad. But they did some good things. No, this is an abject disaster. Yes. This is the worst case it scenario. Is. It, they, it is, Bill. I, can't I like Julius Randle, and then they spent $52 million just for this season on five ninth men. Yep. And, that was, and this is what you traded Porzingis and put the Lee and Hardaway contracts in. This is why you stretched Joe Kim Noah so you would have cap space this summer. So you could go sign a whole bunch of bench players with Julius Randle. There is no way to spin this. You can't feel good about it. I'm not going to let you. I'm just not. You got me. You got me. Bill, Bill, you know I'm an honest guy. You got me. You got me. I got, there's nothing I can say, Bill. There's nothing I can say. I mean, I just try because I'm like this. They're not a worse team than they were. But damn, they were 17 to 65. How much worse can you be? So I guess I'm just trying to find a silver lining. Because, Bill, I've been crying for two, three days. I'm trying to get over it, thing. Bill. The cap space was the best asset they had. This is what I don't understand why they're getting praised. And people are like, well, though, you can trade those contracts in, in December, January, February. It's like, can you? Can you really trade, I don't know, Wayne Ellington for a first round pick? That the, the la- recent Bobby history of the league says you can't get. Well, maybe. Mm-hmm. What is, name me your top three greatest Bobby Portis basketball moments mm-hmm. in the last four years. Like, can you think of one? I can't think, can think of one. one moment? I can't, I can't I think can't. of one. I can't think of one. I can't. I would have rather had the cap space and, you know, like there's stuff on the internet today. I don't know if it's true or not that Miami is trying to get wall and Beal and where you would get Beal. And as the price of Beal, you would take John Wall's contract. And it's like 40 million a year for the next four years. It's the worst contract in the league by far. He may never be healthy again, Yeah, but that's the kind of stuff you can do when you have cap space. And I look at where the Knicks are right now. And if the wizards decided Beal's not going to be here in two years, we want to get rid of this John Wall contract and we want to just reboot. Guess what team would have been sitting there with the cap space and the assets and picks and all kinds of things. Be like, all right, cool. We'll take a chance at John Wall. Yeah. Well, but can we get Bradley Bale out of it? Great. Here we go. And instead they just tied up their cap space with all these dudes. I, I, it so Bill no Simmons, break this me. down for me. If you had an opportunity to fix the Knicks, yeah. what would you do? I would have. I like the Randall signing. I think he's good. Okay. I would have kept the cap space clear. I would have been the way station because I think what we saw, everybody shot the gun this year because they basically allowed tampering this season for the first time. So mm-hmm. on July 1st, yep. 80% of the deals were done. That's true. And now you look around, nobody has cap space. So you have these teams like Oklahoma City, who is going to be a repeater tax team unless they can dump, I think, like $13, $14 million. Mm-hmm. You have, You have, like, the next situation, what Miami was just in, where all of a sudden Miami needed cap space. They, they had a chance to get Jimmy Butler. It materialized quickly. They had to dump contracts. Only a couple teams had the cap space. This seems to happen over and over again. I think the one lesson with the Knicks, these last two years is don't create the cap space before you know for sure you can get the guy. You can create cap space in 24 hours anytime you want. You could like the Knicks could have dumped Hardaway and Lee this summer. There's still they a floor you got to touch on Noah. though. There's still, there's still a floor you got to touch on though. You got to you got to spend like 85 to 90 percent of that space. You can't just leave it out there. So that's why that, that's might be why they did no, it. And there's nobody second, that though. they signed in more than two years. There's nobody that they signed in more than two years. But. If you don't spend it, if you don't get to that, whatever, what is it like, eighty five percent, eighty five to ninety so, percent? So, all right, ninety so percent. Boogie Cousins, last case scenario in December, and you give Boogie Cousins one year, twenty million, so you can did get. You, to did the you did you just did you just call up to the Stephen A. Smith radio show and suggest that the New York Knicks <laughs> should take Boogie <laughs> Cousins? Did you, you just do that, to, Bill Simmons? But you did don't you just have do, to that? do that on July second? Is my point. You don't have to spend fifty two million dollars on one year contracts on July second. There's there's still guys. I just, I didn't think there was any vision for it. And I think, you know, we've seen over and over again, we saw it in 2014 with Cleveland, 
they realized they had a chance to get LeBron. What did they do? They they scrambled. They created cap space. They used the pick to get rid of Tyler Zeller, and they were able to mm-hmm. create the cap space for the Knicks to do all the all the mechanics they did over the last year. Made me think they thought for sure they were getting somebody, and they were just wrong. You know, they whether it was KD, whoever they thought they were getting, they really thought they it were was KD that and person. Kyrie. It was KD and Kyrie. Make no yeah. mistake about it. But Bill Simmons, with that being said, what do we do about James Dolan in your estimation? The owner for the New York Knicks. I mean, I don't know what else you can do. The Clippers, the Clippers mean one one hundredth what the Knicks mean in basketball and just like with the generations of fans, all that stuff. But they were in a very similar situation with Donald Sterling, where once the guy owns a team, that's it. You can't do anything. You yeah. can't get rid of the person. It's his team. It's like it's like if you live on a house, if you live on a street, and the worst person possible buys the house next to you. You can't do anything. Mm. That person's there unless something happens. And with Dolan, I think he's so stubborn. You've talked about it on your show, like he's really stubborn. And when he gets criticism, it actually like makes him more empowered to to dig his feet. That's in and a good like, point. Well, these people don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, absolutely right. And it works with it works with hockey. Harvey Aridon talked about this. But he wrote a good piece yesterday. In hockey, it doesn't matter. They, that hockey players. They just love playing hockey. They'll get to the playoffs. They'll play with, like, a broken ankle. Like, they just love hockey, and and they're always team first. Basketball has become this business where the players are looking at basketball as one of the many things they want to do. And I think this is how Brooklyn got KD and Kyrie. And you think this, too, because I heard you say it before. It wasn't just about the Nets. It was about Rock Nation. It was about uh, the Alibaba, the guy who owns 49% of the Nets. All the business opportunities, Bill, and and that was why those guys went there. It was not a basketball decision. Bill, let me interrupt you because I got I got a heartbreak. I got to get on out of here. Let me ask you this question about your Boston Celtics real quick because we all know that's where your yeah. loyalty lies. How do you feel about Kemba Walker being there instead of Kyrie Irving? Well, he's I mean from a from a teammate leadership, just good guy thing. They just they needed to change the culture. The culture it was the unhappiest Celtics season since Patino was there, mm. and. I think Kemba, by all counts, one of the great teammates in the league and somebody who just works his butt off and is going to be, I think, a lot like what Isaiah Thomas was like in Boston a couple of years ago, where people just love him. Mm-hmm. But they're still a move away now. I think they were a championship contender last year on paper, and they're not anymore. Now they're a one right. move away. They have assets, but they still need one more trade to, I think, be taken seriously. Very last question. I give you the yeah. choice. Kawhi Leonard, Lakers, Clippers, Toronto Raptors. Where do you want him to go? Well, for us, for me and you, it's most fun if he goes to the Clippers, right? Because then I we get so. another team that's a contender. I think for him, from a basketball standpoint, Lakers, because you get to play with Anthony Davis for the next five years. I think from a loyalty slash, could we win back to back? Toronto, definitely short term. But then long term, what are, where are you in Toronto? You're basically FC Ockham and a bunch of guys who are on the other side of the mountain. So I think what makes the most sense is a one and one in Toronto and just redo this all next summer. But I, I think he wants to cash in, especially where he is physically. Yeah. So I I still think it's gonna be the Lakers. I think it's like the smart basketball move, but I'm gonna hate it when he does it. I'm gonna I'm not gonna hate it because it's LA. You know, I ain't gonna complain. I ain't gonna complain about that. But Bill Simmons, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you listening to the show. And I owe you a visit on your podcast, man. So it's yes, gonna happen. You're coming on this summer. We're doing it. And we're doing it. Appreciate you, my brother. Right. Thank you, man. All right. Thank One and you. only Bill Simmons, founder of the ring, has done dirty thirty for thirty work, used to be on NBA Countdown, obviously did a lot of great writing, was a New York Times bestseller. He's done it all. He's absolutely great. I love the guy personally. He's really good people. 888 say ESPN. It's 888 You're listening live to Stephen A. ESPN Radio, ESPN News. Back to your calls to close out the show in a minute. By the way, need seats to a game? Download the Vivid Seats app and enter promo code CHAMPS at checkout to get 10% off your first order. Don't buy just any seat. Get a Vivid Seat. The 2019 SB's auction is now live until July 10th. And we've got some sports experiences that you just won't believe. Join us at ebay.com slash ESPN. In the fight against cancer, we'll never give up. Barbasol. For the past 100 years, generations of men have trusted Barbasol shaving cream for a close, comfortable shave.